This is DJ Johnny at JDMFM and welcome back to part B of Soap and Water. This is the story of soap manufacturing at Banquee in Warrington. In the first part, part A, we looked at Joseph Crossfield's early life and how he set up his soap works at Banquee and they also made candles. We also found out that William Lever had the audacity to set up a rival soap works right next door at Banquee. Let's now go and try and find out what happened next? So Lever Brothers were very creative and entrepreneurs. They decided to package soap individually rather than just sell it loose like Crossfields used to do in other places. Also, they were the first company to use vegetable oils in the manufacture of soap. Brightly coloured packaging was used, as you can see in this Sunlight Soap package, to help market the products so they could sell it individually across the whole country and beyond. As well as Sunlight Soap, Levers also produced a wide range of other famous products that you might have heard of in the past, uh, including Lifebuoy Soap, Lux Soap, Vim Scouring Powder, and also under licence they made Persil, uh, Persil Washing Powder, which became very famous. And who can remember the smells that used to come out of that factory? And the, the, sometimes they say it was like snowing. So uh, you could smell the soap in the air and you could see the dust on all the cars that were left overnight. What a place to live! <laughs> And when William Lever came to set up his rival soap works at Banquee, he lived for two years in the house behind me. This is number nine, Palmyra Square South in Warrington. There's actually a plaque next to the wall where you can see, if you go along, you can see the house where he lived. Amazing. Lever Brothers was a really successful company. So successful, they needed to expand. But with the constraints of the River Mersey on the south of the, of the site and the railway further round and also the roads and everything else, there wasn't a great deal of space to expand to. They needed more space and they couldn't get it in Banquee. So they decided to up sticks and build a whole new plant, a whole factory and a whole new model village at somewhere called Port Sunlight, which is on the Wirral. They did, however, leave the existing plant and, and factory at Warrington and Banquee, where they continued and continue to today as Unilever. So over the years that followed, Joseph Crossfield and Son went through many, many changes, including being bought out by Brunner Mond and also becoming a subsidiary of Lever Brothers in 1926 but they kept the name of Joseph Crossfield and Sons, which made chemicals. However, in 2001, Crossfields was purchased by Ineos Silicas, and that is the last time that Crossfields was used with its own name. And then Ineos Silicas was merged with Philadelphia Quartz or PQ Corporation. And that's the name of the company that stands today. And they're making chemicals for both Great Britain and abroad. Amazing! And what a journey! Then, in the 1930s, Lever Brothers decided to merge with a huge food company. It was called Margarine Union Limited, or Margarine Uni. And they formed together 
with Lever Brothers and it was called Unilever. Uni from Margarine Uni and Lever as in Lever Brothers. Amazing! So, as well as making soap and amazing chemicals, Joseph Crossfield and Sons were also a very progressive employer. They were one of the first companies to ever have a sick club in the 1860s. Imagine, in the Victorian times, completely unheard of. They had their own welfare scheme, helping the employees who had problems. They had excellent relations with the employees. They even took them on days out, day trips out, train journeys for the whole factory out to Langolan and other places. And they went there as early as 1869 on the train. Blinking heck! This was all due to Crossfield's family roots. They were friends or Quakers. They had very, very strong beliefs in the worth ethic and self-improvement and education. They provided entertainment for the employees to keep them away from the, from the pubs uh, so they didn't like beer at all. They were great benefactors of Warrington too. They, they, they set up schools and Sunday schools and even a working men's mission which is actually still just over the road from Crossfields if you have a look. They were involved in the arts. They were involved in the new library and museum that was funded uh, in 1854. They helped to, to pay for that. They even paid towards the new town hall, which you saw when they bought stuff, when Warrington Borough Council bought stuff, Lord Wynne Marler in 1870. They helped to pay that. No wonder they have got a street named after them called Crossfield Street, which right adjacent to Bank Park in Warrington. What an amazing company! And during the war years, that's the First and the Second World War, Joseph Crossfield did their bit to support the nation. When all the menfolk went to war to fight the battles, the factories were left empty. And so the women had to come in and do their bit to support the nation in the factories and keep production going. In this photograph, which I think is actually our First World War photograph, you can see all the women have come in to, to work at Crossfields and it looks like they're emptying this train of materials. It looks, certainly looks a hard and arduous job for them. Soap manufacture in the war was absolutely essential, not just for the soap, but also for the byproducts. One of those products was glycerin. Now glycerin is used for many, many things, but in particular for explosives. Blinky leg. They also made chemicals for all sorts of things associated with water and in particular they were able to convert seawater into drinking water. So if an airman came down into the drink or a, a sailor was out at sea in his lifeboat and they had no water, they could put the canister, put something in the water, a pan or something, put, a pa uh, put something in there, mix it all up blah, 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 and hey presto you'd be able to drink the water and survive. Amazing! They also made parachutes at Joseph Crossfields. The women were there making and stitching and sewing all the parachutes for the war effort. The engineers made component parts for aircraft. And they also fixed fabric to the wings and tailplanes of military aircraft as well. They were busy. They also produced essential cooking oils to help in, in man manufacture of margarines and butters and other edible foods. Their contribution was enormous. It really was. An amazing thing that everybody did during the war. And just near the factory, you can still see a war memorial, which is dedicated to the workers who went off to war and never came back in both the First and the Second World War. The glorious dead. And no history of Crossfields would be complete without some mention of Warrington's famous Transporter Bridge, which is in the picture behind me. When Crossfields decided to expand to the south side of the river, they had to find some way of getting across. And they chose on the option of a Transporter Bridge. 
Now a transporter bridge is really uh, a structure with a pontoon slung by cables and used to whisk across either side of the river, it used to go across underneath. It was actually the second transporter bridge. There was a first transporter bridge built in 1905, but it proved not strong enough. So they built another one in 1916. The overall length of the transporter bridge was 339 feet or 103 meters. Its height was 89 feet or 27 meters and its width was 30 feet or 9.1 meters. It was originally designed to carry railway wagons of something like 18 tons across the river. But later it was modified to take lorries up to 30 tons. I should mention the Friends of Warrington Transporter Bridge are a very strong company organisation and they're trying to keep the, the transporter bridge going. It doesn't work at the moment but you never know one day it might have a lick of paint on it and you may once again see the pontoon whisking across from one side to the other side of the River Mersey. Amazing! I cannot believe how much history there is associated with Joseph Crossfield and William Lever. And we've only just scratched the surface. But it's amazing to think, isn't it, that when Joseph Crossfield first set up his little salt works on the banks of the River Mersey at Banquet in Warrington, that over 200 years later, it would still be there. Yes, it's gone through lots of changes. Joseph Crossfield has now become PQ Corporation and Lever Brothers has now become Unilever. And they don't necessarily make soap anymore, they do more chemicals. But nonetheless, the reason that the factory and the companies have survived is because of some very clever and innovative people and a great work ethic. And this work ethic has enabled them to change and challenge and move things around and develop some amazing chemicals which are used not just in this country, but of course across the whole world. Although Unilever is going through some change at the moment at the Banky site, I'm sure as time moves on, they will continue to grow from strength to strength, as indeed will PQ Corporation. So we've just seen a very small glimpse of the history associated with soap manufacture at Banky. Blink your neck. <sighs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little video on the soap works and, uh, and, and all that. And whatever you're doing, hope you have a fabulous time. And see you again very soon. Bye.